And just to touch up on like tattoos and medicine, I, <laughs> I don't know how much we're veering, veering off topic now, but it's fine. If you were to practice in family medicine, they're going to make you cover that up. Like Boris has a tattoo. <laughs> Got a couple. So I kind of like, we'll use that same mindset where it's like, oh, do I like this tattoo idea? I'll give myself a, like half a year to think about it. And if I like it in half a year, then maybe it's something that I can seriously consider. Um, and just real quick before we wrap up, you got on the subject of tattoos. And uh, <laughs> just want to do a spoiler alert. My third tattoo, I think I figured out what it's going to be. Uh, oh, you have, th you have two already? Yeah, I mean, so I've I got this little guy one. I got 12 years ago, and I got this one. Uh, the camera can oh. see it. Uh, oh, that's a hidden one, huh? I didn't oh, even see that one. It's, it's right here, if you can see it. Yeah, there it is. Wow, what does that mean? So this is, I wish I could actually put this on camera, but I can't because the camera's over there. <laughs> but it's uh, So my dad is an artist. He makes paintings. Uh -huh. And he never signs his name. He signs this little sailboat. I'll put the picture on the screen. Um, okay. He signs with this like characteristic trademark little sailboat that he always draws. And he doesn't sign his name. So this is his signature. So I put that sailboat on my arm uh, with this thing that he told me when he dropped me off at college, like the very first day of undergrad, mm -hmm. very long time ago. Uh, and it's Sio Yisho Budjit. It's everything good still will be. Is that Russian? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Both my tattoos are in Russian. Well, I, you know what? I remember you posting about you getting a tattoo. I was always curious mm -hmm. as to what it was. I think I missed oh, yeah. the story and when you posted it. But yeah, yeah, that's... Yeah, I love tattoos. So, I mean, that's the, story. the fact when I saw you wearing the tank top, and then I saw uh -huh. saw that, I was like, "Oh yeah." <laughs> oh, well, the next one, I'm super stoked about this one. I think this is going to happen probably pretty soon. Um, I'm sharing my screen. This is like when I look at the YouTube analytics. This is where the video just like drops off because nobody cares about this. Uh, but just <laughs> very just off after this. <laughs> you know what? Some people might care about tattoos in this audience. I don't know, but this is going to be the next one. I guess there's a statue at one of the, the institutions in Russia where uh, it's like a tribute to the the animals that gave their lives for medical research. Mm -hmm. So it's this mouse like weaving a DNA double helix. That's pretty cool. That would, that, I think that would look really cool on the arm. I think it's sweet. I think it's going to go like, I don't know, right here, here, here. I don't know. But I just always thought that was cool. It's like, I think it kind of makes you think about things in more than one perspective. Mm hmm. So like those of us that were bio majors, like some of us have to work with animals and that's like where I drew the line. I was like, I am not beheading mice. I'm not doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just worked with like cells and it was boring. But like a lot of people were kind of binary. They were either like, no, mice are, you know, God's creatures and animals and you shouldn't hurt them. And then some people mm -hmm. were like, no, it's like for research. It's for a good purpose. And so I don't care about mice. I, I think it's like, uh, it's not a binary. I think you, you can have both. You can really respect the mouse. Like, you know, the animal mm -hmm. that's giving its life and also realize that its life has a purpose. And that purpose is to, you know, improve ma uh, mankind and our medicine and the things that we can do. It's almost like paying a tribute to it. And also it, yeah. it, it's something that means something to you symbolically. So I think that's the most important thing. Yeah. Well, and the fact that it's in Russia is just like the icing on the cake because it's, you know, my motherland, my, my homeland. Mm -hmm. from, from A tribute so, to your background, your ethnic background. <laughs> yeah. It's just the cool picture too, you know. And just to touch up on like tattoos and medicine, I <laughs> I don't know how much we're veering, veering off topic now, but it's fine. If you were to practice in family medicine, they're gonna make you cover that up. So, they are. Um, at least where I practice, it just depends, I guess, what the populations that you're with and what area you're in. But oh. I think I was more in like a middle higher higher middle class area when I was scribing mm -hmm. in family uh -huh. medicine. So I had to take the earrings off. I had to. I didn't have tattoos at the time, but I knew doctors that had tattoos practicing uh -huh. in that facility and they had to cover really? up. Um, but I know from the hospital standpoint, hospital culture, I've seen physicians with blasted out arms. And that's what I that's why I got one, because I was like, oh, well, I'm going to work in the hospital anyway. So it's almost yeah. like I've committed myself. Oh, you're already committed, Elijah. Yeah. Otherwise, so Otherwise, you got to I mean, wear like a long sleeve. Yeah. I mean, that depends on the family medicine uh, clinic yeah. that you practice at. But. Keep that in mind too. Not many people know that. Not many mm -hmm. people who haven't worked enough in the field know that there's like little nuances of like covering your tattoos or guys you can't wear earrings or mm. you know you have to be like clean shaven or you have to like you know you can't have long hair. Right. That's actually it's interesting that you said it was in like an upper middle class area because mm -hmm. I feel like depending on where you work anywhere but a super snooty upper middle class area tattoos actually help you bond with patients. Right. 
you know, they're like, oh yeah, I've got tattoos. Everybody I know has tattoos, you know, like, oh, that one's cool. Where'd you get that? It's just like, it helps you be not like, oh, the doctor's here or the provider's here. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, it's just one of us. And like, now I can trust this guy. So depending on your population that you work with, it could be a good thing. Or I guess some people would be like, nah, tattoos are bad. And just like, so a little story I have, um, when I was still a tech, right. I, they would allow us to wear these shirts. And like, I had, I was starting to work out. So I wore like kind of tight shirts, kind of like this one where you could see my uh, tattoo. Yeah. Um, from a patient's perspective, I was still a tech, but they always thought I was the doctor for some reason. I don't know if it was a skirt cap in my glasses. You're so confident. But, yeah. Well, yeah. And like the way you talk and the way you get used to talking to patients, yeah. um, they automatically assume I was a doctor and they're okay with me having uh, this. So once I'm a PA, I mean, yeah, they'll, it, everything will be okay. Like it just depends on how you carry yourself, you know, in patient yeah. interactions. That being said, if you have like six inch gauges and you took them out and your like ears look like a freaking earthworm, like, I don't know, some people might be less comfortable with that as the provider, but like, also it's a decision mm -hmm. that you made and now you can't go back on it. Right. So like, what are you saying? Like, because I made a decision I'm not super proud of, I can't be a medical provider. You know, it's like people's judgment is people's judgment, but just do you and do the best you can. Right. I don't know. It's a thing. I don't know how we got on this topic, but this is going to be <laughs> probably a separate video. I guess it'll it's be okay. part of this video is it like, this is like the longer tail end of it, but I'll probably post mm -hmm. it as a separate, you know, whatever, like tattoos and medicine. I, I don't know why we started. Just like, about. just like, like both the topics that we're talking about. <laughs> Literally. And I'm also going to bleep out the S part of the bull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so that's what we'll do. Um, my buddy, Austin, he's a dermatology PA. I refer so many rashes to him. I always text him like, Austin, what is this thing? Uh, and then like, I also like refer people to him. Uh, mm -hmm. But he's actually getting married in in one hour and 15 minutes. Oh, so you got to go. You have to and I'm going to be at that wedding. You got to fix that hair. <laughs> yeah, it takes forever. I hate it. It's just like I wake up and I have to do my hair for hours. Uh, I am going to trim up the beard, though. I want to look fresh. Sounds good. Well, I hope you have a good time at the wedding, man. It was a good talk today. Yeah, definitely. We also we only got to two topics out of our five. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also added one about the tattoos. So <laughs> <laughs> whatever, man. Um, so anyway, guys, I'm Boris. I'm a physician assistant. This is I'm Elijah. I'm a first year PA student at Rutgers. Cool. Uh, and we're going to be bringing you lots more content on PA school admissions, on essays, on interviews, on uh, PA school as a, in general, how to study, that kind of stuff career advice, you know, cause I'm a, you know, a couple of years ahead of Elijah. I've been practicing about two years. He's just starting his PA school journey. He just got in, um, without too much rambling buy my book, <laughs> how to get into PA school, how to write your essay step by simple step, and also just some application tips. Uh, link is going to be in the description for the video and I'm going to a wedding. So I got to get ready. Elijah, good talking to That's you. Good. All right, boys. All right, Elijah, everybody else, peace. We'll see you in the next video.